welcome. Uh, I am Jared, it's Masha, and our project is, or our team name is Team Neverborn. So a little background is, how do you build a ski? Uh, there's many layers that go into building a ski. Uh, you have your P-Tex, which contacts the snow. You have a wood core, that is the main structure of your ski, and a top sheet to kind of enclose everything. Uh, there's a few layers of fiberglass in there, depending on how you want to construct the ski, and some edge. Uh, and our goal with this project is to profile the core of the ski in a much more time efficient manner. This is our problem statement and our goal is to automate the process of profiling a ski. So we're going to take a profiled core such as this, that's just layers of wood glued together, put it through our planer and make a core that looks like that. It's the same, you've seen this video before already. So this is just a little video that shows what a planer does. So this is the, the, uh, the planer, pulls the wood through and shaves a little layer off. Uh, what ours is going to do a little differently is that the cutting head will adjust its height at different areas of the board to create that profile that's thinner on the ends and thicker in the middle. diagram. We have since gotten a different planer, so it looks a little different, but all the same concepts are there. So we have a stepper motor that controls the up-down motion of this whole piece, which contains the cutting head. We have an emergency stop to shut it down. Um, then all of this, all the motors are run from this breakout board that's connected to an external power supply and then a computer. And this is the interface that a user would see. pieces are we have some external drive rollers to uh, help move the board through the planer. There are some rollers inside the cutting head at the moment, but uh, we wanted to augment that a little more so that when the cutting head is moved up and away from the part, you can still move the board back and forth. Uh, so those are shown here and here. And then there is a um, idler wheel that's opposite the cutting head, and this provides feedback so that we know how fast the board is moving and at what position we are. Uh, here's a little state diagram that we're, so the PC is going to be our user interface and Mach 3 is our main uh, controller, it's the software that we're going to be using. From there, Mach 3 controls the drive motors that move the board back and forth and a stepper motor which controls the uh, Z-axis as we're calling it or the height of the cutting head. Um, then there's a little bit of feedback loop to, so that Mach 3 knows where the board is and hopefully the final product is a profiled ski board. So this was an initial sketch of the feedback sensing mechanism. Uh, the, this, I went with this particular design because there's not a sensing dead zone since the wheel is directly opposite the cutting head uh, it, and it rotates and an encoder counts steps. It has a precise location of the board at all times. And the final product is a little bit different than what's seen in this picture. I had to have two different shafts. The there is a wheel and pulley on one, and that's what the board actually slides over. And then there's a belt in this area here to drop it down to another shaft that the encoder is actually attached to. Uh, due to the bed of the planer itself, I couldn't directly connect the encoder right to the wheel. So then, just to reiterate a little bit, uh, the final design has an idler wheel and a belt, and it, the encoder is linked to the microprocessor that we're using, the Freedom KL25Z, and there's a little bit of code there to uh, dictate or take the steps of the encoder and translate into that into linear feed per minute. Here's just a little CAD model of the system. The board moves on this surface here. This is the little wheel that the board contacts and spins. The belt goes between uh, this pulley here and this one here. Uh, this shaft is connected through a shaft coupler to the encoder. Right 
Uh, this is a little bit of code that I wrote to make this all happen. Uh, there's just a little loop to take the number of counts and turn that into feet per minute, and then I have a couple of if statements uh, depending on what that feet per minute value is. Do we need to stop the board? Are all systems go? Uh, is it moving in the opposite direction? That kind of stuff. Um, and then this is just a little bit on our user interface that we decided on. And since Professor Kidder uses a SolidWorks design to make his profiles now, we wanted to keep going with that theme. And so we decided that the best way to interface with SolidWorks was using Mach 3 because it's very customizable and is open-ended and it's also a free program that's available for download. So we didn't have to spend hundreds of dollars on a new program. And this is the user interface. It's a little confusing to use, but yeah, at the same time, it directly tells you what position you're at and has a huge start and stop button. And then these are just some sample G-code because that's what Mach 3 uses. And G-code is pretty universally used type of code. And then also there's a lot of Mach 3 add-on boards that allow all our motors and everything to be run by Mach 3. And then this is the breakout board that I was just talking about. So we need this in order to take all the signals from our motors and our emergency stop and have them be able to go through the computer. And so this is all communicated through a parallel port, and then it's given power through the computer. And so then these are your X, Y, and Z axis ports. So that's what we're using for my motor and his motor as well. Then an emergency stop goes on this side, and then you feed power in on this side. Okay. Yep. And then this is just a little sample of G-code. Um, so this is the kind of code that would go into Mach 3 and it would run. So it would set all the different things, like it would set what tool it's doing, it would move to a home position, it would turn on any tool length compensation, which we don't particularly need, depending on how we set up Mach 3 to recognize our cutting head. And then it just has simple codes of what X and Y we want it to go to. And then this is just how I calculated what size stepper motor we were gonna use because if I don't have a big enough motor to control the lead screw that controls the up-down motion of the planer, then this whole project doesn't work. Um, so I determined that it was around 1.4 newton meters. And so this is the stepper motor I went with. And this stepper motor was like $129, so because of budget constraints, I had to get one that has half the torque we need um, so it has 265 pounds per inches. And then this also has a very standard shaft diameter, which is something I was looking for, and has a reasonable amount of current that it uses for our system. And then this is just a little diagram of my subsystem. So this is the shaft that comes off the planer. I have a 60 tooth gear on it that goes to a 15 toothed gear that goes to my stepper motor that is then run by a stepper motor driver and it then feeds to a Mach 3 interface board and so you can then control all of this by the computer. And then this is kind of one of my major next steps is making a user manual because one of the biggest issues that I had with this project was just learning Mach 3 and I've read the manual but it's very confusing because since it's such a customizable program. There's not a lot of, okay, do A, then do B, then do C. It's, well, if you have this, maybe you might want to do this, but you could also do this. So making a very user-friendly user manual that has step-by-step -step instructions and kind of giving some pictures of like, none of this block will be used, none of this block will be used. You only need to look at what step of the G-code it's doing. If the picture that it gives you of the profile looks correct, and then what position you're at, and if you think that based on what you're trying to profile, like does that seem reasonable or is it incorrect? So uh, a couple lessons learned for, I, I guess, both of us is, for me, uh, the encoder, I did a test on it the other day, because the mating of the uh, shaft of the encoder and then the shaft that the pulley was on, the, the coupler was a little tweaked wasn't a nice clean fit. 
Uh, but I ran a test and it was not skipping counts, which was really nice. Uh, but in the future, it would have been nice to have a little bit of an adjustable mechanical design to make sure that that link was a little better. Um, and then the way that I went, I had a couple different options for, for my piece anyway, and the way that we went was the way to go because you only had to make one of them. There were some other options had a couple different um, points where sensing would happen. This was a, a single mechanical structure mounted out of the way. Uh, and then Something we also didn't think about when we originally thought of this project was we were just going to originally keep the table that the planer comes with, but now that we've started thinking about it, we've decided that we should redesign that and make it longer, and so that when you put a core in, the whole time it's supported, rather than only have, you know, a foot of it supported. And then another lesson that I learned is that we didn't think about the size shaft that the planer had because we just thought that it would be a standard size, and it wasn't really a standard size, so that's definitely made making my subsystem significantly harder because I couldn't just buy a standard coupler or a standard gear. So for, for my next steps, uh, my next subsystem to make is the linear motion of the board. So I need to create a little frame to hold a couple of rollers and a motor on that, and then that will get mounted to the external frame that we're building. Um, I'm going to have, I think the reason, the way I'm going right now are they're going to be separate from the actual body of the planer so they can be easily removed and stored if you want to store this in a location that's where it's not set up. Um, two different motors just so I don't need to have a, um, a very complicated drive mechanism off of just a single motor uh, and that's kind of what I'm looking at for the next couple weeks here. And another one of my major steps is I need to find a way to permanently assemble the breakout board and the motor drivers to the planer, make a little housing for them so no wood shavings get in them and they're protected. Um, I also need to finish assembling the gears that control the cutting head, and then I also need to design the frame that the whole system goes on and supports the core of when it's being profiled. So for, for me and my subsystem, some potential challenges are if I'm using two motors and you supply the same voltage to them, they might not spin at exactly the same speed, which is something I would need to prevent slip. Um, so that will take a little bit of time just to make sure that they're going to play nice together. Um, of course, there will be some unforeseen challenges, but interfacing those motors to Mach 3 and then getting Mach 3 to recognize our encoder uh, as a as its feedback mechanism will, will be a challenge ahead. Um, and those are just some of the things that we've thought about to date. Um, it's also sort of challenging because since we're not just making a traditional CNC machine, like how he plugs his motors into my breakout board matters because it's not a traditional X, Y, or Z motor. So we need to figure out when you put G-code into Mach 3, what would be the best axis for it to attached to his motors so that when it runs through the program, it's not trying to change a motor that's not there or change it in a way that we weren't expecting because it's not a CNC machine. And then I also need to make a pretty affordable structure because the rest of our project's been pretty expensive, but it also needs to be pretty stable, so I need to figure out a good way to do that. And then this is just our work breakdown structure for the remaining time. So some major things that we have to do is just make the frame. Um, I have to make a mount for my motor and plan to 3D print it. And then I need to just test a sample program. Um, originally, I'm just going to test a program that just changes the cutting head at a linear fashion, just to see if, as it goes through and it's cutting, can you move the planer head. So that's what I would do first before I tried to make a full core. Um, and then I need to assemble all the wiring and make it all covered up so it doesn't get damaged by running the planer and looks aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, and as I 
as I mentioned before, I have another subsystem ahead of us, but then once we've reached a point where we need to start working together on troubleshooting, that'll take up the remainder of our time. And then this is just our, uh, our Gantt chart representation of the last you know, seven or eight weeks that we have here to work on this project. Um, and a lot of it's going to come down to troubleshooting once we get all the subsystems together and we can really start figuring out exactly how we're going to interface everything to Mach 3 and how, it, how to make sure it all works the way 